Hi, YouTube. Okay, this was the final round of the Colorado Open. Um, I was paired against an unrated from Germany who was doing very well in the tournament. Um, he had a very thick German accent. He sounded like a chess player. He had the accent of a, a 2000 plus ELO chess player. Um, but uh, he got a provisional rating of 2163 after this tournament, so. Um, this game ended in a draw. Um, but it was another, like, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm full of myself, but I'm just really happy. I played kind of a brilliant game, and I was winning, and I missed one, I made one mistake in the end game, and it, it was very counterintuitive how to win. So, it would have been amazing if I found this, this, this move, and I do think I had enough time to do it. I had, like, 18 minutes left with an increment. I think I could have found it if I knew it was a position I should think longer in. But, okay. So, I played e4, and um, I was like, okay, this will be a knight orb. Um, and then he went here, and then he played g6, and I'm like, uh-oh, I have, like, never looked at the dragon, except for one time when I learned how to play e4. So, so I don't know theory, and you should really know theory, because it's sharp. And the thing is, no one, no one plays the dragon anymore. Like, everybody in their grandmother played it five years ago, but no one plays it anymore. So I haven't ever faced it. But I did used to play it when I was, like, 1600. So I was just going off of that. Like, like six, six-year-old information that I barely remember. So I played bishop e3. I'm like spending like way too much time in the opening. Bishop g7, f3. I think I spent 10 minutes on bishop e3 and f3, which is ridiculous. But castles, queen d2, uh, knight c6, and then I spent another five minutes here, and I castled queen side, which apparently is, Josh said that is what was in my book that I looked at once. Um. And then he like slammed d5 down like with 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 enthusiasm and power and got up and walked away. And 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 I like was so so scared. I was so scared. I thought I had already messed up. I thought I already walked into a like a like a line that I was bad. Taking on c6 and then playing in, instead of castling. Yeah. So I thought for what I think like 15 or 20 minutes, I might be exaggerating, but it was a long time. Um, and all I was, I, I wasn't thinking about it in terms of like, I wasn't trying to just remember because it seemed vaguely familiar, right? But uh, having never looked at this position before in my life, except for one time, like a year ago, I think I ended up okay. So... I, th I I guess, I guess there's a lot of ways to play, but I was just sitting here just just calculating everything because I don't know the theory. I know there's like a way to like for black to sack a rook and like kill white if they play wrong, and I was I was I wanted to avoid that at all costs. I remembered that from when I played the dragon. I didn't remember exactly how it happens, but I sat there and I kind of like tried to figure out how it would arise. Um, and I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want him to get a bishop. I didn't want him to attack me. I did not want him to attack me. So, yes, Daniel plays queen e1 here. Um, what I played, apparently, is actually a line um, that's actually black has to know well, and my opponent did not. I just played I just played chess. So here was my thinking. Okay, I'm going to take on c6, and I, I, I want to draw. <laughs> I just don't want to lose out of the opening like an idiot. So I played bishop h6, um, and I just thought if I trade the dark squared bishops, I'm not going to get checkmated, and that's all I want out of this position. That's the only thing I want. I'm not picky. I don't need to be better. I don't need to win the game. I just don't want to get checkmated. So I played bishop h6, and he immediately played a bad move. Um, but then I immediately, well not immediately, also played a bad move. You could tell neither of us knew what was happening here. So... Bishop h6 is a good move. Um, and here, a 
apparently black is supposed to take this um, and like it's it's very very dangerous for black but he fought for kind of a long time here for the first time in the game and he played e5 which looked wrong to me um, it's a little strange because I can win a pawn if I want to. Um, so, I, okay, I take on g7, which is correct. Um, and then here I should just take this pawn. But I was concerned about... I, I didn't really want to get into this typical, like, black is down a pawn. Oh, but you take another pawn. Wait a minute. This isn't right. Like, maybe here is what I was afraid of? This doesn't do anything, though. Yeah, e5 is just, like, a terrible thing to include. You don't have a bishop to recapture on f8. Okay, this is definitely what I should have done. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking I was afraid of, like, some, some endgame pressure on my pawns. And I thought, like, best case scenario, I, I draw. But with the pawn on e5, I think it changes a lot, actually. Um... Because he has to- yeah, he has to spend time to defend the stupid pawn on e5. If this pawn's not on e5, then he can get a lot of counterplay with bishop e6 and- and just- just build up a bunch of pressure on my- my pawns and my king and somehow- sometimes they want a pawn. Like, I used to- I used to play this way as black and I would get this position a lot and I would- I would win sometimes down a pawn. Um, so I was just trying to avoid anything that, like, a dragon player would know how to play. Um, and I was like, e5 seems weird, so let me try and take advantage of that. But I had, I, I had a little oversight, again. So I played queen g5. Alright, so queen g5 seems logical at first. Okay, I'm attacking this e5 pawn. Um, and I'd like to just, just get him, right? But after rook e8, I realized that even if I get my pawn to h5, it doesn't matter, because he just plays h6 and then g5. So it's not actually a real threat to play h5. Um, however, I felt like I had to bluff here, basically. I thought I was like maybe even close to losing here. Um, I, I think I should still take on d5, probably. Maybe. I don't know, but I, I just didn't like opening all these lines to my king. It was just scary. So... At this point, I had realized that h4 was probably not a great move. But I was like, maybe I play g4 at some point and prepare it, and I don't know, move my queen back so he doesn't have h6 with tempo, and like, yeah, queen g5 was just a complete waste of a move. But, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it now. So, played h4. This is not a real threat. Um, but then he immediately played a move that was quite bad, I think. He played h5. h5. So, like, he, he just... He just, he just like, justified everything that I did. Just, it just, like... It, it makes sense now. Everything I did makes sense now. But he played h5. And he, he missed something when he did this. So, oh, hi Josh. Hello. I know. What are pawns, anyway? I don't understand. So... He didn't realize that I could play g4 here right away. He, he didn't realize that... I, I thought what he missed was after takes, h5, knight takes, rook takes, queen takes, rook takes, f6. Um, my rook is trapped. But I have rook g4, and I get two pieces for the rook. And I'm doing just fine there. So I thought that's what he missed. I thought he missed that I'm getting two pieces. But he told me what he missed was he, like, didn't see rook h5. He didn't see it. Like, that this is defended. Um, however, this is, a, this is a very interesting position. This is... This is fascinating. <laughs> so... What the fuck's going on? Alright, so white has- white is currently down two pawns, um, but I'm also currently up a piece, but the rook is trapped. 
Um, I thought here he would play f6. Um, what he did was just fine. Uh, he included d4 first. Um, it, it was a little bit of a shock because I wanted to put my knight on a4 anyway. Um, and I feel like pushing this pawn only helps me because it makes a square for my bishop and uh, my knight was, was wanting to do this anyway. And my knight is just going to dominate the, the light squared bishop if he doesn't force me to give me give him a rook for it. Thanks for the three months, cheesy gazebo. Pog. Uh, this is a more typical Zefcat position than last game, yeah. Yeah, but it, I, it was still, like, extremely positional in a way, at least. Um, so, he ended up playing king h6. Which surprised me a lot. I, I I wasn't considering any king moves. I was only considering f6. And I still think f6 is better. Because it kind of gave me like a target to attack on f7. So I take on g4. Takes. And yeah, he's bringing his king in. But he's bringing his king right into my pieces. And there's like... There were several uh, instances where he could have walked into a mating net very easily. Um, so I, I don't think bringing the king in right now is a good thing at all. Um, but he plays king g5. Um, so, so here... This pawn is never going to be a problem because I'm going to play knight c5 and it's going to be defended. Can I reroute the knight to d3? I mean... Bishop, bishop c4 is, I think, pretty clearly what I need to start with. Because if I force him to push this pawn, then that makes this knight even stronger. Um, pushing the pawn in any way, like say he plays something like this, I, I feel like he could easily get mated. Uh, like, because I go here, and I was looking at this during the game, knight c5, and in some scenarios I play king d2 and I'm like gonna threaten mate. In one way or another, it like, like king d two. Like okay, like he can take here right now. But I'm gonna win this pawn, and the king is cut off. If he goes king e three, I don't know. Like, I want to mate him, but I don't think I can. Maybe I just play rookie one and take. But there was, there were, it was like seeing, I was having visions of King D2, like being unstoppable mate at, at some point. I don't know, remember exactly where I saw that. Maybe it was just imaginary. But yeah, that is the problem with F5. So he has to defend, you know, and if he just does this, this is just not good for black at all because, I mean, you're just losing another pawn. So he has to defend the pawn. And then here he missed another thing. So, I could just defend a pawn, you know, I could just I could just do that. But I played rook f1, um, and what he missed was, he, he thought he could play king g4, bishop takes in this move, but this move loses to bishop e6. Check. He didn't realize that this was happening with check. Um, so when we got to this position, he played, played g5, defending his pawn. And this is, I mean, this is a really interesting position. I don't know, I feel like I should be winning here somehow. But it's very difficult. I have to play very accurately. So, now that I've taken the f7 pawn, knight c5 is very good because I have the e6 square under control as well. I can use it, put up my bishop there or my knight. Um, and it's hard for him to coordinate his pieces. And his king just seems like it's, this was just, it just doesn't belong there. So, he plays king g3, which took me a while to understand. Um, I don't think I even understood it on this move. I had to play a move and then see his point. So, I assumed his point was just, okay, push pawn, which I guess is the point. But I played bishop e6, um, stopping g4, because g4 I have rook g1, check, and I'd pick up the pawn. Um, so he plays king g2, which I wasn't expecting. I should have been expecting it. Um, 
So white to play here. There is only one move that, that secures an advantage, and I did play it. But uh, King G2, I was starting to get worried that I wasn't even better until I found this move. So his point, first thought is rook f5, yes, of, of course, rook f5 is the, the first, I think any move that jumps into anybody's mind, and it's what he was expecting, and it's what I thought I had to play, but then I thought for much longer, and I decided that playing rook f5 is bad, because... Okay, I'm attacking a pawn, but if my if my rook ever goes that way, then it's... I feel like I might even be losing, because... Okay, he plays rook g7 or something like this. Or not... No, he plays... G, that's the... Yeah. That's what I... This was the main thing I didn't like about it. So it's blocking my bishop, so he can play g4 right away here. And, okay, taking seems like a bad move to me. Because you could play rook h8, and, it, and like, my, my rook is misplaced. Like, it's, it's like, it can't get back very easily. It, it takes a few moves to do something. Um, so, so there's that. Um, so, so I decided, I decided rook f6 was a good move. And this is the only winning move. Um... So number one, I am I am stopping g4 uh, immediately. The e5 pawn is going to drop regardless. The knight is coming to d3 to e5, regardless if there's a rook supporting it. All the rook would do on f5 is get in its own way, because um, I don't want to take this with the knight. I mean, with the rook anyway. I want to take it with the knight. Also, the rook is conveniently looking at the c6 pawn just in case. So, I, I think rook f6 was was a great move, um, and it was. It was the only move. So here it's getting it's getting difficult for him to find moves. So rook g7. He, the the another threat was just playing this and winning this pawn. Uh, rook g7 stops that threat, so it's sort of forced. Here I could not decide what to do. I could not decide between knight d3 and this idea I had seen bishop g4. The point of bishop g4 being I was forcing him to move his king up and kind of get in his own way so it takes more time for him to get his pawn going, and then I would go here, um, and then and then like this. And I, I just thought I would get his king in his own way. Like, his, his king is in the way, that way. Because um, I feel like it's we uh, well placed on g2, more so than it would be on g3. So... But knight d3 is also very good, because I am just threatening to do this. Um, but it is, like, a little bit nerve-wracking, you know. Because uh, he goes here, and it's a little uncomfortable, because he plays rook h8, and then king h2, and pushes the pawn. And it's, it's looking a little bit hairy. Uh, and I was having trouble evaluating whether he's going to be able to do anything or not. And I, I just couldn't couldn't figure this shit out. So, yeah, what what would you do? Would you play knight d three or would you play bishop g four? Or or a different move? Oh, I'm sorry, it's black's move here. So here, or a different move. This this or something else. Bringing the king in is always a possibility as well. What would chat do? I, I would say this is uh, where I made number one of two mistakes I made in this game. I still think what I did was quite interesting. Right, yeah, yeah, this is a very complicated position, Dennis. I mean, just based on feeling, though. So, knight d3 is definitely what I should do. Um, bishop g4 is interesting. It's an interesting idea. I'm still winning here. I didn't spoil my advantage. Um, but, 
If he goes king g3, bishop f5. I haven't made as much progress as I feel like I have. Um, he goes rook h8, and I was gonna like move the king in and, and then here, and then he has no more checks. I was looking at this position, and I was like, I could just play this kind of slowly, but I feel like I freezed his pawn a little bit better. But I don't know, I feel like maybe this is not good because I'm taking away my good square for my knight. But I just couldn't. I, I don't know. I still don't know, cause M maybe I have knight d seven here. Knight d seven might be very good. So I still have the square for my uh, king. Yeah, knight d seven is good. And then you know, if he has to move his rook, rook back to e seven, then that's fine. I go rook g six. This is what I saw. Uh, but for some reason, the evaluation is wildly different. Um, between knight d3 and bishop g4. So, this is what black should do. Knight d7 is what white should do. King f4. King f4? King f4 seems weird. Huh. Okay. Wow. Well, no? I don't really understand. So I go king d2, then what? Rook h2. He doesn't have this check. I don't really get it. Um, g4 here. King g5 is what he should do here? I mean, that doesn't make sense. Well, okay, I guess I go here, and I'm just winning this pawn. Or something? But what is so good about this? And by so good, I mean black is minus three. I don't, I don't really know. I just think it's like a really fucked up position. But... Okay. I, I don't know. I still don't know. I, I think bishop g4 is still a good move. I don't even think it's a mistake. I, it says for some reason I am plus four here and I am only plus like two and a half here. I don't really get it, but whatever. Uh, maybe Josh knows. It's just It's just a really weird position. So here I thought definitely he should play king g3. Uh, I was a little worried about that. I was starting to regret it a little bit. But then he played rook h8. Uh, which totally justifies what I what I did. Because this makes it 100 times better. Because now I go knight d3. And now it goes king g6. But, but now I take and I am defending my bishop. So I'm doing fantastic here. Um, he plays rook e8. And... This is his point, but it's it's actually nothing. I had to think a long time though, because this is also strange. So you know, the point is that if I move the knight, he takes the bishop. So this was his point. Um, but there's there's some some nasty tricks here now. So I only have one move. I only have one good move here that actually wins. Um, and I only have two moves that doesn't- that don't, you know, just lose. This is a situation where you have a win, a lose, and a draw. That's the three moves. But, okay. Yeah, so, this is just a nothing move, and it's about equal here. Um, it's just kind of a waste. I- I mean, he goes here, and, like, I can go into an equal, uh... I think I have a perpetual here or something like this. How is this equal? How is black not winning? Oh, knight f3 check! I didn't see knight f3 check. Oh, okay. Okay. 
I thought black was winning here, so I misevaluated that. But I mean, it's okay. What I played was much better anyway. So rook f3 is, you know, obviously the only uh, good move. Um, but here, black has to be very precise to not get checkmated. So where you put your king, go. And so he has to go to h2. This is this move is immediately losing to bishop h3, king g1, knight g4, and black cannot stop mate. Rook f1 is coming and there's nothing you can do to stop it. You don't you don't even have a, one of these moves because your rooks aren't connected. And this is like one of the, the sickest patterns I had ever seen, and I was just like praying for him to to fall into it. Um but unfortunately, he played king h2. And okay, he played king h2, and then I almost hung my knight. I was thinking, oh, but I I mean I'm just I'm just mating him here. I played bishop h3 and that and like he can't stop knight g4. It's the same thing. And, but bishop h3 would hang the knight. So thankfully I thought more than a few seconds here, and I was like, oh right, my knight. Okay, but here again you only have I mean you only have one good move here. Uh, the computer gets a little bit confused here. Um, it At first it's saying that rook f2 check is the best move, and it wants to repeat moves, and that's plus four. But if you it doesn't realize you can keep repeating moves. But if you actually play it out, then it's like, oh, okay. And then it says my move is best. But sometimes the computer just does that, like it repeats moves and then it plays the move it actually wants to play. Um, so, rook f5... Oh, rook f5 is actually probably good too. Yeah, I was thinking he would go... here? Oh no, this isn't... don't you just have to keep checking here? Isn't this the same thing? I have bishop d1 here. I have bishop d1 here. Wow. I did not see bishop d1. Because bishop e2 is fine too. No, I yeah, I just didn't consider that. That's bad. That is bad that I didn't consider that. Okay, white, white is winning here too. So there are two wins. And I think this one is better than the one I did, to be honest. Um, so Dennis found a better move than me. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I realized I could just move my bishop. I thought it was just a draw. So I took on c6. Um, and you know, this looks kind of annoying because... Oh wait, not here. So here I took, yeah. Um... And this is annoying because he's he's getting the e4 pawn. But white is still winning, but white only has one winning move. So, white to play. It's also just kind of weird because there's a lot of just weird end games where it's like seem hard to hard to win. How strong is rook h3, king g2, bishop f3? Oh, does that... That might be okay. Uh, I just... So it takes h3, bishop takes e4, and then I play g4. You, you take here, I guess. Um, I don't know. The, the funny thing is, 
this is the end game we got. But the way I got it, it was a win, and this is more difficult. Maybe it's still a win. I actually I don't know. It's just like a really strange end game. Um, so maybe this is also good. But what I what I did was better. Um, oh, thanks for the 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 sub blunder goat. Yay! All right. Uh, I played bishop f5. Bishop f5, I'm just trying to keep the pieces on the board. I don't want to trade anything unless I have to. So, the really weird part is what he played here is is the best move, which is, I, I think, kind of shocking. Um, although, anything else... Like, he thought for a long time and then seemed to be frustrated and played this move, but... Yeah, what what uh what does black do? He played rookie three. Uh rookie three I take and I we have this position arises. This is very critical position. So do you want to have a bishop or a knight in this endgame? That's the decision you need to make right now. You're going to get an endgame where black has a king and a rook in this pawn, and you have a minor piece and three pawns. So, do you want a bishop or a knight? So, I made the right decision, actually. Um, so everyone is saying bishop, of course, but that is actually incorrect. So you, you a bishop would be good if there were pawns on both sides of the board and you need a long-range piece. But since there's only pawns on one side of the board, and um, especially because my opponent is in time pressure and so am I, and knights are tricky, I think 100% I want a knight here. A short-ranged, tricky piece. I don't know... Um, if the end game's winning no matter what, or if it just the end game I got was winning, but just by pure calculation, like I accidentally played it perfectly, and but I didn't know, like I didn't see the point. <laughs> so okay, I played knight d4 because I want to keep the knight. Um, g4, and I play c4 because I need to get the pawns going. Um, he plays king f2, king d2 is very accurate. g3, bishop e4. Uh, n this is probably a blunder because of this. And if, now if I go here, I, he has this move. So I have to just do this. Okay. White to play and win. This this is a this is a fascinating endgame. This this belongs in a museum. I mean, not the way I played it, but or it, it belongs in, a, in an endgame book. The only reason this is a win is the placement. It's, it's just, it's so beautiful. It's, it's... On what book? So, here's the problem. So I played c5. This is the right starting move. This is this is the right move. But, and the reason I did this is because I didn't like moving the knight and giving his king a square. I didn't like him coming in. I felt like it's gonna be really, really hard to make progress. So, c5 feels like the right starting move. But here, king g3 check. What do you do? This is where I played the wrong move.
Uh, I'll, I'll just wait for a minute, because this is interesting position. I'll give you a hint. Uh, <laughs> it's completely just counterintuitive. Um, unless you study endgames all day every day, or you just calculate. It, Dennis is meta gaming. So King C3 is a draw. Which is shocking, right? If King C3 is a draw, shouldn't this position just be a draw? D3 is also a draw. King E3. Opposition! Very important. Okay, so the point- here's the point. So after king c3, what I played, his king is just getting in very, very quickly. Like, like, it's very annoying. I'll show the rest of the game in a minute. But in this position- okay, king can't come in, but it's like, I'm just hanging- a, I'm just hanging a pawn. How am I supposed to win if I don't have two connected pawns? c6? And, and when I looked at this, like, it was just like, he just plays rook b1, rook c1, and I don't have anything. But if he plays this? This is check! I did- And every other thing just works out perfectly after c6. The, the rook cannot come here, it, it can't get the get behind the pawn this way because of the knight. I, I, I can't go here. If he goes here, uh, you just you just push, and you're, you're just defending the pawn in time with knight e6. And the king is shouldered out. The king is shouldered out. Isn't this insane? I know! This is so cool! The, I, it's- it's- just hang a pawn, idiot! The opposition is more important. But, I mean, that's just- that's just- that's just so fucking cool, because... Yeah, after, after this, I'm like, how am I supposed to win here? Um, I found a really good try. Uh, I played b4 here, and taking this would actually lose. Um, because cause of this, is what I saw. And I have this very strong rook knight e6 check, and now I have knight d8 winning. Um, so, he can't take the pawn, but fortunately... It, well, actually, it's quite unfortunate, because he said he didn't even see that idea. He just played this. But he didn't even see that idea, so that's very annoying. But this is just a draw. Um, I, I tried my hardest. I, I mean, I, I win this pawn, but he wins this pawn, and his king gets here, and I just can't make progress. I just can't do anything. I, I tried for a little while, but I can't. So, yeah. I, uh, king e3. King e3 is a very obvious move. King e3. How do you win in the winning position? What do you mean? Well, you, you, you can play black here, and I'll win. How does the rook get on the C file? Like this? Okay. Uh, what do you play here? The king is shouldered out. You're gonna be in zig swing at some point, I, th I feel like. Like, if he goes here, I go here, and you have to move the rook somewhere. Um, if you go here, then... This is, this is like, kind of the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. Um, I... Th I'm trying to understand this. Hold on. Oh my god, that is so disgusting. A3 wins here. That is so disgusting, because rook takes d6, I, I do that. But otherwise, what are you doing? You go here, you have this... If you, I mean, you, the, you can't bring your king in in any other way. You have to, that would take too much time, and I'm just going to do this. If you just push a pawn, then I can just play a4. And if you do this, then I play here. And, and, and still, like, I mean, that's a fancy way to do it. I could just move the king in immediately and just do this. But I, I really like, I really like just, like, playing a3. I think that's really disgusting. 
King d4, knight c5. That's also winning, I think. King d4. And then... I do like giving him the opportunity to hang a rook. But, yeah, king d4. What are you saying? I Yeah, e3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as. Yeah, you definitely meant to say as. Can you just try knight b3? What do you mean? This is just winning. I, I, I don't know. I just... I like, I like including this because I think it's really, really disgusting. Because... Because... There's, black doesn't have a move. I just, I think this is a power move, honestly. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it, but I think that the a3 is really, really fucked up because of this. So, yeah. But, I mean, you don't have to do that. You could go here. And then say, black goes here, and then you go here. Here. And then, I think king d6 is winning. Unless he has some weird thing, like... I did it! Did you see that? Oh my god, okay. Uh... That- oh, that's so fucking cool! God! I love chess. Chess is fun. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. I mean, if he goes here, then I just go here or something. And then... Then if here... Well, well... Well, I just go here, and then, and then I'll be able to block. Yeah, so... Wow. Wow. But I'm an idiot! I defended my pawn like a human! But that would have been like I think I, I think that that game would have like won won a prize or something. I like chess. <laughs> okay, here but yeah. It was a draw. Uh yeah. I mean I tried really, really hard. I really did. I found a lot of only moves. I don't know. Like, yeah, King E3 is, like, the spiciest. And everything just- just barely works, too. Just this pawn is perfectly placed to help, this knight is perfect. And this- that's how- how important the opposition is. If I were on the chapter in my book about opposition, then- then I would have played this for sure. But I was still about- I was still reading about, uh, centralizing my king. Except for when you don't. 